Well, some men are going to be coming forward and uh, would love to put a Bible in your hand if you do not have one. So if you be sure to put your hand up and they will be sure to pass one down the aisle to you. And once you have your Bibles, if you can, turn to the book of Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. This morning is a time in our service for those who are followers of Jesus Christ. And what we do is we get to actually follow Jesus' command to remember his death on the cross by taking a piece of bread and drinking from a cup And it reminds us that his body was broken and his blood was shed. And why do we take time to consider reminders of a crucifixion? Well, it's because Jesus' death was the very means of our salvation from our slavery to sin and from the eternal consequences of our sin. So if you're not a follower of Christ this morning at this time and when eventually the trays come in front of you, we'd ask that you would just let them pass by and just give it to the next person and then this morning that you would just listen. So to prepare for our time together, we're going to look at Ephesians chapter 2, um, verses 1 through 10, beginning in verse 1. And you were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you formerly walked. According to the course of this world, according to the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience, among whom we also formerly conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, doing the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. Do you remember what it was like to be a slave to sin? Whether we knew it or not, we walked in our sin. It was our nature. We lived for our lusts and for our desires. We lived for this world, and the Bible says that we were dead. There was no life in us. We may have lived for the moment, seeking to derive whatever satisfaction we could in this life, but we ourselves were dead. And, And being dead, we couldn't do anything to change our circumstances. Look at verse 4. But God, being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So that in the ages to come he might show the surpassing riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. We were dead in our transgressions, helpless to change our situation, and God acted. He acted out of his grace and his mercy. He showed us favor that we did not deserve. Believers once dead are now alive. Because we are united to Jesus Christ, who after his death, was raised from the dead on the third day and he now sits in the heavenly places with the Father who in the ages to come will welcome us to join alongside him. Believer, do you long for that day when we will be with Christ? Set your hearts this morning on that day when we will forever be with him, not only free from our slavery to sin, but free from the very presence of it. Lastly, let's look at verses 8 through 10. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. The entire event of our salvation from beginning to end was a work of kindness, which he freely bestowed on us as a gift to those who did not deserve it. God opened our eyes through the truth to see the reality of our peril, the reality of what awaited us. 
He made us alive and enabled us to cry out in faith, in belief, and trust upon Christ as our only hope of salvation. And so today we worship him in remembrance today, not because of what we did, but because of the work that Christ did. We are his work And he who created us made us for good works. He made us alive so that we would be free from the slavery of sin. And we are now free to walk in those good works that he actually designed beforehand for us. And so that's what we do. That's what we do this morning. We walk in those good works. We give honor and glory to him in all that we do because we desire to obey him, because we love him, because we are thankful and grateful to him that he did what we could not do. So I'm going to ask the men to come forward and pass the trays out to us. And if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, this morning, take a few minutes in quiet reflection upon who you were without Christ. And think about what he accomplished on the cross. And then examine yourself. Has your walk, as you, as you think about your own walk, has your walk been more reflective of your former sin, slavery to sin in this world? Or has it been marked by walking in the good works that Christ designed for you? We're not saved by our works, but we were saved for good works. And so do you see growth in these areas in your life? Oh, sure, the good works that God produces in us are going to be mixed. They're going to be mixed and tainted with sin. But if you have put your faith in Christ alone for salvation, you actually look in your life and you see these growth in these areas, then you have every reason to be confident that the Lord has actually saved you. So this morning, you and me and we've all fallen short, but confess where you've fallen short, knowing that the Lord will forgive and cleanse us from all sin. And so this morning, if you're in Christ, worship with us this morning by, on your own, expressing your gratitude to the Lord for what he's done. Confessing where you have actually sinned against the Lord and resolved by his strength, by his mercy, by his spirit to actually walk in obedience to him. When your heart is prepared, you may take the bread and the cup on your own. If you don't know Christ this way, maybe, or maybe even you thought you did, but as you assess your life, you only see evidence of walking after the pattern of this world. You live for your desires, and we would beg for you to come talk to one of us. Talk to one of the people at the end of this service will be to my right, the door on your left, who would love to talk to you about what it is to have biblical faith and salvation in Christ Jesus. Believer, you can go ahead and take communion on your own this morning, and I will close us in prayer in a few minutes.